2 Kings chapter 2. And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind. So, let's go to Genesis 5.24. Genesis 5.24. Look at the word take. Genesis 5.24. We have an, another illustration in the Bible. Past tense, but Genesis 5.24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not. What? What was he not? Then death, 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 death. Die, 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 die. He was not. For God took him. Enoch was a man that was raptured. I know you can't find the word rapture in the Bible, and you won't. But that's the one word that we give for God taking. Enoch is a type of church. Now, with Genesis 5.24 and chapter 2, verse 1, Elijah's going to be, I mean, Elijah. Here we go. We got Elijah and Elisha. Elijah's going to be raptured. By a whirlwind is going to show up. That whirlwind, here's the first time it shows up. Now, when we close our chapter reading today, we're going to go to the book of Revelation. We're going to see something to the tribulation period that we're reading now. Job, that is 42 chapters, 42 months long in the tribulation period of months, Job gets a whirlwind of the Lord speaking. So something about that whirlwind. So that Elijah would, I mean, let me see this. and it came to pass that the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven. So where is Elijah today? He's in heaven. By a whirlwind. That Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Now Gilgal is the place where the first encampment of Joshua in Israel after the crossing of Jordan River. When we look at these places. I don't know what if they have anything with the tribulation period. But this would be the first place where Joshua in chapter 5 circumcised the males. Gilgal means wheel or rolling. And it would be rolling the reproach. <clears throat> Let me forgive my throat. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, stay here, I pray thee. And this is, looks like Elijah's just trying to get off home by himself. He's still got that anger, that attitude that, that from Jezebel. I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel, house of God. And Elijah said unto him, As the Lord liveth, there's an oath. As thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel, about northwest, 15 miles plus or minus. Elijah is a faithful companion. I'm not going to leave thee. So they go from a wheel or rolling to the house of God. Where God first met with Jacob on his run going to Rebekah's family. This would be also the place where they had the golden calves. One of my prophets, this is the place where they have false God worship. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? So it has been put forth by the prophets, by Elijah, by Elisha. Today, Elijah's going. He's going to heaven. It's common knowledge. And that master and head is, Elijah has been a head to Elisha. Elisha's been the student of Elijah. And the head is, okay. Elijah has been full in charge of Elisha. That's what that means. And so when you have schools today, you got the master, headmaster, headmaster and all the titles of master. 
It comes out of a Bible. And he said, yea, I know it. So Elijah knew it. The prophets knew it. Hold your peace. Hold ye your peace. Shut up. <laughs> I don't know why you say that, but quiet, guys. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here. I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. That's the cursed city. That's where Rahab got saved and joined Israel. And he said, Elijah, Elisha, as the Lord liveth, there's an oath, as thy soul liveth. Now look at it, as thy soul liveth. You're going to heaven. I'm swearing on your eternity. That soul of ours is eternity. But for Elijah and Elijah, we know God's calling you home today. I ain't leaving you. I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. That's southeast, east, about 15 miles. This is the first captured city of Joshua. It's also called the Moon City. The church age is, is called night. We're the, the moon. Christ is the sun. The church is the type of the moon. Where can we apply the applications? I, I can't. I don't have all the knowledge. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head? So everybody knows what's happening to Elijah. And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee, Hear, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And I wondered this place here would be where John the Baptist would be baptizing the children of Israel. I wondered this is the place where Joshua crossed. And he said, As the Lord liveth, there's the oath, as thy soul liveth, you're going to live forever, your soul. I will not leave thee. And they too went on. So it's over and over the same thing. It's repeated. It's a verily, verily. It's an important event. Why is Elijah traveling all around? Is he trying to get rid of Elijah? No, no. But every time he comes to one particular spot, here, Elijah, stay here. I'm going to go a little further. He's trying to get away. And 50 of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by the Jordan. Now, why? what stopped them? They're following Elijah and Elijah. And all of a sudden, they just stop and they're, they're watching them walk to the Jordan River. They don't even. And you will find. That Peter, James, and John were afar off when Jesus was praying. Kind of interesting. And Elijah took his mantle. That's a loose garment worn over garments. A cover. Let's look at 1 Kings 19.13. About this, this little short thing about this mantle. 19.13. It's not really that important, but it's important. <laughs> First Kings 19, 13. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle. He covers his face and went out and stood in the entry into the cave. He's got his face covered. And behold, it's like, a scarf. it's like a scarf kind of thing. Behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? All right. Almost like Lazarus come out of the grave wrapped up. And then one other place he has 19, verse 19, verse Kings. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Sheba, who was plowing with the twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he was the twelfth. And Elisha passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. He's walking by and takes that mantle. And just keeps walking. And Elijah's like, well, let me go say goodbye to my family. Oh, what's it to me? And then here we see this mantle here. It's back in the hands of Elijah. So Elijah had to hand it back to him. 
Because it says Elijah took his mantle. Kind of weird that the Bible was set forth about three places this mantle, and yet we don't even told three things really the birth of Jesus Christ. Date, <laughs> time. I mean, everybody assumes, you know, it was it was nighttime. We don't know that. Jesus could have been born in the afternoon and the angels at night showed up to the shepherds. At that point when all the sheep are finally gathered up and they're finally in their rut. You don't know. But we find out about this mantle. And it's interesting what God will put interest that there's something about this mantle. What? I don't know. <laughs> and Elijah took the mantle and wrapped it together. He kind of folded up. Smoked the waters. Now, when Joshua crosses, I believe it says, as soon as the priest's feet touched the Jordan, it divided. Now, watch this. Touched the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. Now, why don't you wonder? See those rocks there? Gilgal? Gilgal is the first place that Joshua and, and Israel camped after they crossed that dry bed of the Jordan. Here it is again. And it came to pass, when they're gone over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee. <laughs> he, finally, he finally got to the point, Elijah's not leaving. All right, well, ask what I should do for thee before I am taken away from thee. So he knows he's going. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. There's no prayer for Elijah. It's a quick request. Elijah, when you're gone, I want double what you have. That's remarkable. And you're going to find after this event, you're going to find Elijah does have that double power of what Elijah had had. He's going to raise a dead body. He's going to do a lot more healing. And he said this would be Elijah. Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless. If thou see me when I am taken from thee. It shall be so with thee. But if not. It shall not be so. So. In the mold that God's going to call me, take me home. If you see that event, you're going to get that double portion. But if you blink, you look the other way, you're not going to get it. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. All right. So you got chariots of fire imitation. And horses, plural of fire. And parted them asunder. So here comes this chariot and horses of fire. They throw Elijah and Elijah apart. <laughs> Gonna leave Elisha behind. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And I've seen on the internet, they show pictures of Elijah in the chariot or on the horses. That's not the case. It's the whirlwind that calls Elijah, not the horses. Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. It wasn't the chariots. You got to correctly read the Bible. We're going to look at it in a moment. And Elijah said, and he cried. My father, my father, a title of respect, that to, uh, to Elijah, Elijah was just like his father. And you've got a religion that steals that title for their priest. And Jesus says, call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, that's God. Knows how it's capital, I mean, knows how it's small F, not a capital F. Have you ever noticed what, when you were to dress a priest as a father? Take a look at the, at the F. 
That's not the case here. I can imagine what modern Bibles do. And it's a title of respect in which Jesus said, don't do it no more. Matthew 23. The chariot of Israel. I have no idea if that is a reference to that chariot of fire. But if you're to study the Bible, the chariot of Israel, the next best thing you would have going by Ezekiel is that, that mercy seat, that Ark of the Covenant, and the cherubims. And the horsemen thereof, you say, well, run that back to verse 11. Verse 11 says fire. Elijah, Elisha doesn't say chariot of fire, horses of fire. And verse 11 doesn't say anything about horsemen. And yet there are horsemen coming with horses in Revelation chapter 5 that's going to start off the tribulation period. Four horses, different colors. And he took his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And I saw him no more. Huh? Saw him no more. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell upon fell from him. Again, I've seen pictures where it shows the arm of Elijah hand. No, it's not that mantle fell, and here's that mantle again. Why do we know so much about this mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back, stood by the brink of the Jordan? Now you got wondering those those prophets are watching. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, smote the waters, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had smoked the, smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah went on. All right, now here's that portion of Elijah on him. Here's that sign. The waters of Jordan have been parted again three times. Parted for Joshua and children of Israel, the priest. It parted for Elisha and Elisha. Moses died. And now it it has dried up again, parted for Elisha. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, and they're back up there in verse 7, they stood afar off. They said, the spirit of Elijah does rest on Elisha. So that parting of the Jordan River, by that's a sign. Jews require a sign. Well, look at that. Elijah now has that spirit. They were not there when Elijah said, Elijah, what shall be done? So evidently, God is speaking to these prophets. Hey, that office Elijah now is Elisha. I'm glad I don't have to say that too often anymore. That gets confusing. Mm -hmm. And when the sons of the prophets that were to view at Jericho saw it, the cursed city, that they just marched around, he said, The spirit of Elijah does rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. That's not, now you see how you got the father and bowing down? That's not, it's respect. It's an oriental gesture of respect. To us, we would put our hand out and shake hands. Now, we're going to stop right there, but let's go to Revelation 8, 11, 8. Chapter 11, verse 8. And we're going to run in the tribulation period again. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. People say, and today, you know, I don't read the Kings and all that. You got to, to get the whole Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the truth. And you can't say I studied the Bible and I, I nitpick reading. I've had many people. My own grandma was there. Oh, I just read the Psalms. That's good. But there are 66 books. So we've read Revelation 11 enough. Uh, Revelation 11, verse 7. This was probably Moses and Elijah, verse 6. Turn waters into blood, stop in the rain. Verse 7. When they shall have finished their testimony, 
the beast, that's the Antichrist, that ascended out of the bottomless pit, shall make war against them, and they and shall overcome them and kill them. All right, let's look at that for a moment. Scripture with Scripture shows it's probably Elijah and Moses. Moses is going to die twice. Moses has already died. He's coming back in the tribulation to preach, and he's going to die again. Elisha, he was raptured. He was taken away by the whirlwind. He's coming back. And you cannot ever say Elisha's not going to taste death like Enoch, because here is Elisha getting killed by the Antichrist. So you cannot say Elijah, well, he's a type of church. Where do you stop that? Well, Elijah was raptured, and, and Enoch was raptured, but Enoch never comes back and dies. Elijah comes back and is dead. Now let's watch what happens. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. What, how do you like that for the holy city? And they, the people, and the kindreds, and tongues, and nations shall see their dead bodies three days. And I have. Nope. Not a complete like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was three days and three nights. They almost stink it, as Martha would say. So they're not really going to corrupt. Maybe some corruption. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Jesus was buried. And they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over them, being dead, and make merry, oh, Merry Christmas, and shall send gifts one to another. I mean, what kind of holiday do you recognize that with all around the world? This is going to be a worldwide event that these two prophets are dead. Ha ha, to you from me. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. I mean, come on, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth with changing the water into blood and no rain and whatever they wanted to do, the Bible gave them access. After three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and the resurrection, they stood on their feet, and great fear fell upon them that them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven. Now, Elijah didn't hear a voice saying to him, come up hither. There's the rapture. There's another rapture. All right. So let's look at Moses and Elijah. Moses dies. Well, in the middle of the night, Michael the archangel shows up and Satan shows up and they're fighting over the body of Moses. You can't take that. Hey, listen, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. God told me to get that body. The body of Moses was raptured. No one knows where his tomb is today. Elijah, we just read, he's walking along. Here comes this chariot of fire, the horses of fire, and, they, and the whirlwind takes him up. He doesn't die. Moses died. Now in the middle of the tribulation, oh, no, wait a minute. We can't go to the tribulation period right away. Let's show up on a mountain somewhere with Peter, James, and John that are far off, like the sons of the prophets. And they're rubbing their eyes because they got a little sleepy. They're rubbing their eyes. And Peter looks. He says, wow, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Well, I thought Moses died. I thought Elijah was raptured. Then they, they go away. Two men that had a, a, a weird thing, event. Besides Enoch, Moses' body was taken by, by Michael. You can't find his body. Elijah was raptured. Now, these two prophets match up here in the period of the tribulation period. Here these two men show up. Hey, Elijah, watch this. What? Water turned to blood. <laughs> Look at that. How's that? You think that's... What? No rain for any more water. Wow. Check that out. Hey, that guy hurt me. <sighs> Fire blew. That's what the Bible. This is Bible. These two men, one that died and one that didn't die. The, the Antichrist comes up and kills them. 
and then they have a merry event around the whole world. They don't say happy Christmas. They say merry Christmas according to the Bible. Moses' <coughs> Moses' body was taken by Michael. I don't know if you want to call that a rapture or a resurrection. I don't know what you want to call that. But here are these two men. They are now dead. They're unburied. And they say, you know, they both have a rapture together. If Elijah does not have a story to tell. What are you, and that's remarkable. And then you cannot go Moses and Elijah type of church age. Why? Because they die again. I'm not dying again. Once the Lord calls me home, the rapture. I'm not coming. I'm coming back with Jesus, but I'm not going to die. Joel says I'm going to march in ranks. They're going to. They can put a sword in me, but it ain't going to do me no harm. You realize I, and I don't want. No, let me say. Let me let me get rid of I. Let me let me get this right. The church. Let's say right now that the church is raptured. Those are alive. All right. You know, you're going to have something far better than Elijah will ever have. Elijah's going to die, even though he was raptured. If the church gets raptured, you're never going to die. You're never going to have that taste of death. Elijah has forward looking back to, hey, you're coming back here and you're going to have a hard life and Jezebel is going to kill you. <laughs> How's that? Doesn't the scriptures mention Jezebel? Isn't she not in the book of Revelation? Hey, I'm going to kill you, man. Really? <laughs> I was raptured. So, oh, wait, I just lost that. Uh, I don't know much about dates, but I'm going to call it pretty good. This says 896 BC. So, let's say 900. 900 plus 2,000 years. It's going to, let's, let's say roughly, let's say, I'm not dating nothing, please do not, I am giving a round number. Let's say 3,000 years, and Elijah's going to die. Though he was raptured. Though he was raptured, Elijah's going, now Enoch, he, he was raptured, he'd never come back to die again. Elijah, you know what you got to look forward to right now? There he is. He's gone. Elijah goes back over. You know what you got forward look? Uh, Elijah's in heaven. You know what he's got forward looking back? He's coming back in the tribulation period. And he's going to die. Isn't that remarkable? And he's going to be with his buddy that he never met, Moses. And he's going to just wonder, you know, Moses, uh, we know prophecy. We talk to Jesus. We know the Bible. What's this death thing going to be? What, what's this death thing like? Well, and he's going to explain it. And then Moses is going to turn to Elijah. Okay, I explained this death thing to you. Explain to me what this rapture thing is going to be like. How's that? <laughs> Elijah never died. Moses died. Elijah was raptured. Moses was never, going to, never raptured. And yet, that's going to happen in tribulation period. So you see, Mary making and Christmas giving and, and gifts and trees and all that, it's not about Jesus. It's about the death of Moses and Elijah. It's remarkable what the Bible will hold. That's why you got to read all of it. 